Lift your own shoulders. Lift your toes and just reconnect the toes to the ground. And then very gently circle the arms up, clasp and reverse, stretch up. And then to one side, chin in to the chest. Press the feet down, stretch up and then to the other side. Breathing in, stretch up. Just turn to one side. And then breathing into the center and breathing out, turn to the other side. And then come to the center, lower the arms, lift and roll the shoulders and hands on the waist. Press the feet down, lift the chest. Breathing in, turn the head to one side. Take an in and an out breath here. Breathe into the center when you're ready and then breathing out, turn to the other side. And take an in and an out breath. When you're ready, come back to the center and breathing out, soften the knees, bend, engage the abdominal muscles and breathing in, then come to standing and then lower the arms, lift and roll the shoulders and then breathing in, raise one arm, breathing out, turn the head to the opposite direction away from the arm, breathe into the centre and breathing out, lower the arm. Breathing in, raise the other arm. Breathing out, turn away from that arm. Come back to the center and breathing out, lower the hands. Lift and roll the shoulders. Clasp the hands behind your back. Open the shoulder blades and breathing out, turn to one side. Come to the center and then breathing out, turn to the other side. And then come to the center. And then just release the hands. And then just circle the wrists up. Stretch the fingers. And then circle the wrists down. Lift and roll the shoulders. And then bring the hands to the heart centre, soften the knees and circle the arms up. Clasp and reverse, stretching up. Look up this time, if that is appropriate for your neck. And stretch up again. And then head to the centre as you turn to one side, lateral stretch. Come to the centre and then over to the other side, lateral stretch. Come to the centre and then turn to one side. Sorry, because I said turn previously, which might have been confusing. Come to the centre and then turn to the other side. And come to the centre. And then lower the arms, lift and roll the shoulders. And then slide the hands down the legs, onto the shins. Just feel how stiff. You might, might not be. Yeah. Breathing in, lengthen the spine. Breathing out, soften the knees, bend in. Breathing in, again, lengthen the spine. Stay here as you breathe out. And breathing in, soften the knees, press the feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Breathing in, raise the arms, touch your thumbs, and just slightly sway from side to side. And then very gently come to the centre. And lower the hands, lift and roll the shoulders. So we're going to come to some salute to the sun. Sue, damn the dog, you know what.
preferences. And then there will be choices here. You mentioned strength, Charlotte, so we're going to give you an option. Breathing in, soften the knees, hands up, palms together. Come through the heart center, soften the knees, and once again, hands onto the shoes, breathing in, lengthening the spine. Breathing out, soften in. Breathing in, lengthen the spine. And once again, soften the knees as you breathe out and touch your hands to the floor. So if you want a strength, you'll step back into plank. If you don't want strength, then step back with your right foot and then lower your right knee. If you want to um, go into full plank, go into plank and then bend your knees to the ground. And then very, very gently bottom towards the heels, but don't feel you've got to totally bring your bottom to the heels. Just come up with your bottom high enough to feel comfortable so that you're just stretching your upper back. Hands are on the floor, almost like a puppy pose. And once you've got comfortable, just very, very gently sway your bottom from side to side. And then very gently come back to all fours. Hands are under the shoulders, knees are hip width apart. And some classic cat cow to mobilize the spine. Breathing in, dipping the back, looking up. Breathing out, rounding the back. Chin comes to the chest. And a couple of times to your own breath. Again, just going through the vertebra, mobilizing the spine. We've been traveling and the head heat as well. It's very easy to stiffen up. And then next time you ran chin to chest, tummy tucks in, you've got an option to come to downward dog. If you don't want to come to downward dog, then either come to puppy again or come to cat cow. But otherwise, if you want to come to your strength building downward dog, come off your knees, lengthen your back, and then begin to lengthen your legs. So you can walk the dog by bending one knee and then bending the other knee. And you can start to sway your hips as well. Just checking that the um, hands are connecting thumb and second finger to the floor and the inner elbows are facing one another so that you're protecting your upper arms and your shoulders. And then extend both legs back, tummy in, so that you're in a proper dog. And then very, very gently bend your knees back down to the ground and come to a full line on the floor. Stretch your arms out in front of you and using your hands to press down into the ground, just subtly roll a little bit from side to side. You can roll onto the right side if you want to and stretch the right leg, right arm and then Come to centre and roll slightly onto your left side. And then come back to the centre. Slide your hands towards you so that they're level with your chest. Elbows in, looking down at the floor. And then as you breathe out, just engage your tummy slightly. Press down with your hands and come to kneeling. Make any adjustments to feel comfortable. And just come to sway your bottom from side to side. And then sliding your hands towards you as you kneel up. Arms up. Maybe join the thumbs. And then breathing out, tummy in, turn to the right, 
Maybe put your right hand on your right wrist and your left hand on your tummy as you turn to look over your right shoulder. And then coming back to the center, raise the hands again. And this time we're going to be going to the left as you turn to the left. Um, left hand on the waist, left waist, right hand on the tummy. And turn to look over the left shoulder. Come back to the centre, bring the hands to the floor, back into tabletop. And then tucking the toes, we're going to come to standing, however that works for you. So you might want to come up into a downward dog again. Stretch out. And then walk your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet. Stay forward. Soften the knees and maybe hold the elbows just for a breath in and out. I'm really softening my knees and I'm resting with my torso on my bent knees just to stretch out really the top of the back of the neck. You can just sway slightly. And then just drop your hands. Maybe use your hands to support you as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Lift and roll the shoulders. And then come once more to hands together at the heart centre. Soften the knees, circle the arms up, stretch up, palms together. Come through the centre, soften the knees, and bring hands to the shins once more. Breathing in, half lift. Breathing out, soften in. Breathing in, half lift. And then breathing out, soften the knees and take the hands to the floor, stepping back with your left foot. If you want to be strong, then stay high. If not, bring your left knee to the ground. Right foot back. So you can again either be in plank um, or then just bend, bend both knees back down to the floor. And then once more, bring the bottom towards the heels. The bottom can stay up. Your head almost touch the floor in puppy pose. And just sway your bottom from side to side. And then come back to all fours. And extend the right leg. Keep the right toes tucked under to open up under the toes. And just slightly sway forwards and backwards on the right foot, well forwards and backwards as your right foot is being just stretched out underneath. And then tummy in as you raise your left arm looking down. If you feel that you want to go stronger, you can lift your right leg, which is a balancing act and stronger on the core. To help your balance, you can extend your right heel. And then bend the right leg, right uh, left hand goes to the ground, and then you can go to the other side, and sliding your left leg back, tucking the left toes under, and extending the right arm. If you want to um, stay like that, that's fine. If you want to go to the next stage, lift the left leg, coming in. And then very, very gently bring the right hand and the left leg back down. And then very um, gently cat cow dipping the back and rounding chin to chest. Dipping the back and rounding chin to chest. So either do that again or come to puppy pose. Or if you want the strengthening pose of downward dog, tuck your toes, tummy in, and come to your downward dog, lengthening the back, and then extending the legs. And then walking the dog by bending one knee and then bending the other knee. And then stretch both legs out, tummy is still in. The perineum can just engage slightly upwards. 
and then just very very gently bend both knees come back down to the ground and you're still in tabletop just subtly lift your right elbow and then slide your right hand palm upwards behind your left so it's threading the needle coming slightly onto your right shoulder maybe moving your left hand out to the left pressing your left palm down or just opening on the right shoulder if that's good for you the right side of the head so you can stay like this if you're into acrobatics uh, you can uh, extend your left leg back tucking the left toes under you can even lift your left leg up using with the heel lowering this is all optional lowering the leg down bending the left leg now then tell me in as you press your left hand down come out of that back to the fours so just gently swaying your bottom from side to side and then just lifting the left elbow palm upwards as you slide the palm through threading the needle on the left side bottom is up you're resting your head maybe your shoulder the left shoulder on the mat pressing your right hand down maybe moving your right hand slightly further out to support your weight And then if, again, if you want to slide your right foot back, your right toes tucked under, that is another variation. And if you're feeling very strong, you will engage your core and lift your right leg, maybe using the right heel. This is all optional. And then very gently lowering the right leg if you lifted it. Lowering the right knee. Coming back by pressing your right hand down to all fours. And then once more coming onto your tummy via up dog with your knees resting on the ground, stretching out on the tummy, hands stretching out in front of you. Widen your knees, bend your knees, soles of your feet up to the ceiling, and just sway from left to right, your hips might rock from side to side. You can rest your head to one side or to the other. You can rest your head on um, the upper arms or just have it down. If you want to um, bend your elbows and rest your head on the backs of your hands, you can do that too. Just gently swaying from side to side. And while your legs are up, circle the ankles a few times in one direction. And then circle the ankles a few times in the opposite direction. And then stretch your feet and relax them. And then stretch the toes and the feet and relax them. And then very gently lower your legs so you might feel comfortable just to bring your knees slightly together. And jelly roll, so just rock from side to side on your tummy. Take an in and an out breath. And then just pressing down on your elbows to lift up slightly. Come into Sphinx Pose for a couple of breaths. So your elbows are down on the ground. You're looking down on the ground. You're coming into a back bend. So the back is being moved in all directions, which makes the perfect balance of the body.
and then just very gently lower your head, slide your hands back to your chest, elbows in, press down on your hands to come to kneeling. Just very gently rock your bottom from side to side. And then just gently come to um, sitting by dropping your bottom to one side or the other and stretching your legs out in front of you. Lifting the flesh out from underneath you. Just lightly touch your hands to either side of you to lengthen your torso, extend your feet, and then relax your hands, relax your feet, and just once more circle your feet a couple of times in one direction, and then circle your feet a couple of times in the other direction. Stretch your feet out and just relax, and stretch out and relax. And then just very gently bend your knees, tummy in. You can stay like this. You can lift your feet off the ground, tummy in. If that's enough for you, which it probably is for me, stay there. You can extend your feet forward, tummy in to keep you upright as much as possible. And if you're super wonderfully poor, Strength, you can do the boat by both hands. Well done, Charlotte. Oh, and Patsy. Oh, God. I did it quick, you didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're ready, just bend your knees in, but you can stay there if you're uh, super good. And then just very, very gently come to slide your hands onto your shins, maybe hold your ankles, and just come forward to neutralize that strength. Of the core that you've engaged. And then just very, very gently supporting onto the legs, open, stretch your legs out along the ground and open your um, feet in a V. Take any adjustments if you need to under your bottom. And just very gently breathing in, hands up, um, palms together or um, Clasp your thumbs, venous lock, and turn to your left outstretched leg, tummy in. Slide your hands along the left shin. Leap with your chest, and then when you're ready, just come forward in a forward bend over that left leg. Both feet are extended. This is a forward bend, but it's also a, a rotation. So a rotation um, lengthens to either side of the back. So we're lengthening on one side as we go to the left. In this case, head forward is calming for the nervous system, and the breath here is being concentrated into the back. Your hands are supporting your body, you're not just left to hang. You can have your hands to either side of your shin if you prefer that. If you've got long arms, you can hold your feet. But this is a relaxed pose. And then tummy in as you very gently press your hands down to support you to come up. And then come to hands either side of you. Just lift and lower your shoulders, press the hands down and lift the chest. If your neck allows you to look up and let the eyes roll to the top. Letting go of any thoughts. Bring your head to upright. Tummy in as you raise your arms, either thumbs together, palms together, whatever works for you, Venus lock. Turn to the right, tummy in. I bend my arms to protect my back to slide down to my right 
chin, or you can have your hands to either side. Try and keep on your left buttock, try not to let it lift up. And when you're ready, just relax forward on the right side now. So you can probably tell that going to the right, you're stretching along the left side of your um, back muscles. And as you're coming forward, there's a great tendency to slump down on the right side. I notice I'm doing that. So apparently the aim is to leave with your chest so that you're stretching both sides of your, uh, both of your sides evenly and then come forward. And I find that very difficult to do. And the only way I can do it is to come forward less to keep the evenness, but it's just an awareness point how much we tend to slump down. And then, very, very gently, tummy in, carry in, engage just slightly, to so just slide your arms back, to come upright, come back to the center, you have to roll the shoulders, and maybe just bring your hands under your legs, to bend your knees, and they're going to come into radical the soles and feet together. So, how's your brain engaging, Sue, on any points that anyone wants to ask Sue, or any um, stiffness would be good. Incredibly stiff. Yes, yes. Um, the spine, as I've done before, is it runs from. So, if you have to draw a line from the inside, outside of your big toe. And follow it down over your, in, over your uh, ball of your foot, and then it goes up in a curve above your instep. Can you see what I'm doing? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then comes down and finishes down at the base of your heel. So if you do a little push in with your thumb, and every time you've got a little notch on that, that's that's every one of. That's a reflex point for every one of your vertebrae, so you can actually count them down to vertebrae. So if you've got a back problem, and I've got a lower L2 and 3 problem, right. so that would come to about here, and then you might, doing it carefully and properly, you come to there, and that actually would be the bit that it does with me, that's what hurts, but it hurts more on my right side because it's more my, my, into my right hip. So you can actually find from the, the reflex point of where your back so if you just manipulate that carefully with your fingers or whatever, going up and down or pressing, it can just help. It's supposed to help relieve. It's supposed to um, clear the, the path in your body to let, allow the body to heal itself from that sort of point. So that's that's the. Uh, so it's really interesting, and you can. It is there is actually a notch on that bone that runs down there for every every one of your vertebrae. So you'll feel it, feel it more on the right hand side if you've got a problem. Same as your left, yeah. So it's you have to do it at the same time. But uh, so just have a little practice. But it's quite soothing to yeah to run down that at the back. And even if you're not massaging hugely, you're still opening and yes. all the yeah, it's just position um, yeah. hips and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. My hips are incredibly stiff. Where's the hip? The hip, that's on the other side. So this is the spine is on the, so if you think of your body, your spine is in the middle. Yeah. So that's in the middle of your feet, both yeah. sides there. The hips are on the outside, so that's on the outside of your foot, along here. So if you work down, you've got your shoulder coming down. So hips about sort of half, so you think where your hip is in your body, roughly yeah. just to give you an idea. It's sort of just after halfway. There's a sort of lump. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah, and that's your hip reflex. So mm -hmm. it's this for the right side and this for the, the left side, yes. Mm -hmm. So we're just very, very gently massaging our feet and opening our hips as well. And then very gently bring your hands underneath your knees or underneath your thighs to lift the legs up. Stretch the legs out in front of you, the hands on the ground. 
anyhow, and just bounce your legs. And then this very familiar tap or rub or whatever works for you. Your legs, your thighs, your arms. I've been bitten alive back here actually. I just, mm -hmm. just, oh. you know, first time I've ever died walking bitten. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> well, I avoided everything. I avoided it in the front. Debbie mm. said, oh, she said, we've got terrible mosquitoes here. Yeah, didn't get a bit worse. Mm. And I was well. Perhaps they don't like me out in front. And um, came ones back like, to Debbie. Yeah, and like got like back here and just taste. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Just yeah. Immediately. Just so annoying. So annoying. So you have yeah. yeah. you ever heard of the moth thing with oak trees? Oh yes, yes, yes. I've never yes. heard of it. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. Yes, yes. 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 In fact, a friend I've seen this afternoon, they've got a massive garden with an enormous oak tree. About two or three years ago, my husband was um, doing some gardening around the tree. Went inside, said he didn't feel very well, went upstairs, took his clothes off, and he was covered in hives. Absolutely oh, clear. Yeah. He had to go to the hospital. It's a history, yeah. Actually. Yeah. Get a history injection and was really unwell for a few days because they're really, really poison oak or something. Yes, it is. Oak processionary moth. Yes. Oak processionary moth. That's right, yes. But they drop down. They've marked them. Yeah, they're doing something. They've dropped down. I've never heard of it. I sat under the tree, but not. But in the shade, yes, on the edge of it. Oh, it'd be fine. We no, it's fine because that was a week yeah, ago. Yeah, let's be very careful with those. And, uh, but it's, the season's nearly over, but it mm. depends on the year, yeah. on rain, um, the ecosystem. Yeah. There's a um, car park on just opposite Claremont, and you go in there, and I said, yeah. oh, there's nobody. I went with Sally Pepper, the walk with the dog, but just a few months ago. Oh, well, that's fine, there's no one parked there. Went the parks around, walked away. Somebody saw this notice. Do not park under this yes. tree. It's absolutely infested with this stuff. So quickly moved it out of the way. And, uh, <laughs> well, well, oh, I never thank you. Wash the car. Oh, yeah. so, yeah, right, but yeah. it's uh, apparently it's very, so very, just very nasty. Thank you for the chest as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just be yeah. Oh, God. So just cross one leg over the other. I've crossed my right over my left. So I just, um, I'm going to raise my left arm. Doesn't matter which. So, and then just bring my left arm across, right palm can just turn up to look over my right shoulder. And then come back to the center, just uncross the leg and change. So I'm crossing my left over my right, raising my right hand, turning to the left. And just turning around. Now we leave that shoulder. And then we're ready to come back. And then we can come to lying uh, on the ground, on our backs. And um, just lie out completely straight on your backs because we're going to do some stretching. And just palms down, extend your right foot. And as you breathe in, raise your right arm. Rest the back of the right hand on the ground. And breathing out, turn your head to the left. Breathe in, stretch away the right arm and stretch away the right leg. And as you relax, bring your head back to centre and lower your right arm arm and relax your right leg, let it drop out to the side. And when you're ready, engage your left foot, so extend your left heel, breathing in, raise your left arm. You can bend it at the elbow if there's any restriction. Rest the back of the left hand on the ground. Turn the head to the right. And as you breathe in, stretch your left leg, stretch your left arm. Bring your head back to the centre and breathing out, lower your left arm and totally relax the left leg. 
Engage both legs, extend both heels, breathing in, raise both arms. You can hold your thumbs as an option or just raise your arms, relax, whatever works. And then breathing out, start your breath. And then there'll come a point where your tummy tightens and your arms will naturally follow and lower. It makes it an easy lowering of the arms. Palms down. Bend one knee and then the other so that both knees are bent. Feet are hip width apart. And just start a couple of pelvic tilts so you're not actually lifting your bottom, but you're just rolling, flattening your back and then rolling away so there's a little gap onto your back. Very soothing for the lower back. One of the remedial exercises, I would say, of course, taken from yoga, um, adopted by osteopaths for people with lower back issues when they're on the mend, when they're, when they're, when they're cute, can't move, a bit has gone. So the back is very supportive, top and bottom. It's minimal movement, but it is movement. And just very gently relax. And have your feet hip width apart, but you have the option of widening your feet towards the edge of the mat according to your comfort as we begin the very gentle swaying of the knees from side to side, and your hip will lift off the ground. You can have your hands slightly wider if you want to to support you, just be comfortable. Just letting both knees roll to one side, the hip will lift. And you can linger there or move with your breath, your choice. The back of the head is resting heavy on the ground and you might find that your head joins in with the movement. So yogically, your knees would go one way and your head would go in the opposite direction to get maximum rotation and ringing out of the back almost. But if you find that your head naturally goes in the same direction as your knees, that's fine too. And then very gently come back to your knees being upright. You might want to make an adjustment of your feet hip width apart and keeping your right foot on the ground and bending your left knee, hugging your left knee into the chest. So there's nothing to do here, just relaxing for a moment, holding your left knee into your chest. You might find that as you relax into the position, your left knee comes further into your chest as the muscles kind of begin to let go. And then, just to focus now on the hips, holding the left knee, either with both hands for a smaller circle, or if you particularly want a wider circle for your hips, just hold your left knee with your left hand and your right hand can rest on your right hip or on the floor and begin to circle the left knee in one direction just exploring that rotation of the hip socket and then when you're ready change the circle of the knee opposite direction. Now then still holding the left knee, you have the left knee into the chest and then as you breathe in let the left knee travel away from you to arm's length and still holding the left knee. Breathing out in your own breath pattern, hug the knee into the chest. 
and then just as you relax, maybe we let it travel out. And do this a few times to your own breath pattern. already hug your left knee in one more time. Just really enjoy that hugging in. And then when you're ready, you can still support your left knee either on top or underneath as you let your left foot travel back down to the earth. Both these are upright, both feet are on the floor. And just let your knees sway gently from side to side. And then you're going to leave your left leg where it is, knee bent, foot on the ground. And pick up your right knee, hugging your right knee into the chest. Just enjoy hugging the knee in, working on something called the Apana energy. It's the foundation rule of the five energies in uh, yoga and Ayurveda foundation being probably the most important. It takes the body a little while to settle. And then again, we're going to think about the right hip. So you can either keep holding the right knee with two hands for a small circle, or if you particularly want a bigger circle, and hold your right knee just with the right hand and your left hand can rest on the floor or the left hip. And just begin to circle the right knee and therefore the um, rotating the um, thigh bone in the, in the hip socket in one direction. This is where arthritis can creep in for those of us who might be prone to arthritis. In those little bits where we don't always move the leg. We're moving it backwards and forwards, but we don't often rotate it. And then very gently circle the knee in the opposite direction. And then start to hug the knee into the chest, holding it with both hands. And then in your own breath pattern, let the knee drift away to arm's length like we did with the other left knee. And in your own breath pattern, start to hug the knee into the chest. And let it drift away to arm's length. It's almost massaging across the lower back, almost across the hip area. Hug the right knee into the chest. And then when you're ready, 
let the left knee draw it so that both knees are hugging into the chest and you might want to open your knees out slightly to miss your tummy and just hug both knees into the chest let both knees drift away we're holding um, each knee um, each hand hugging the knees into the chest very gently hugging the knees into the chest. Just gently start to sway from side to side. So the back of the head's heavy on the ground, you're lifting your hip off and you can rock from side to side a little bit or you can rock right over onto your elbow. It's entirely up to the back of your back of your arm. It's entirely up to you. Back of the head is heavy on the ground. That's being massaged too. And then hugging both knees to the chest. Both knees are together and circle both knees in the same direction. So that's massaging the lower back. The bigger the circle, the more up the lower um, the lumbar vertebrae will go. So circling in one direction, both knees lean together. And then when you're ready, you can circle in the opposite direction. And then just clasp underneath your um, thighs, clasp your hands together, and just very gently raise your feet up to the ceiling. And just, your knees can be bent, just slightly sway from side to side. Very light inversion. And bend the knees into the chest, hug both knees, just rock once more from side to side. Support the legs underneath as you place your feet onto the ground. And either to relax, keep your knees bent with your knees touching, maybe your feet slightly out in constructive rest. Or if you'd like to rest totally, stretch out into Shavasana, giving the body a chance just to rest from the movement that you've made. And just bring your attention to your breath. Be aware of the abdomen rising and falling. You can hold your tummy and just stay in Shavasana. Subtle rise on the in-breath. And the tummy, abdomen moves subtly away from the hands as you breathe.
you now bring your attention to the base of the nostrils. Just be aware of the air quality as you breathe in. The air is slightly cooler. And maybe notice as you breathe in whether the air travels in the centre of the nostrils, whether it travels to one side. In Eastern medicine, each um, side as the air travels through the nose represents something in our health unbelievably. The air should be drawn in soft and smooth and as you breathe out the air should be just again a smooth exhalation, barely audible as you, unless you're going to bark at something, but barely audible as it moves. Soft, smooth breath. When you next breathe in, think of following the breath mentally. It might be that you bring your attention, the breath follows into the centre of your head, the centre of the forehead. And unless you breathe out, the breath turns around and just leaves again, going out through the base of the nostrils. In through the nostrils to the centre of the head and just then let the breath go. With each breath you become slightly heavier, giving the weight of the body to the ground. You become aware of any sensations. Maybe the touch of the clothes on the skin, the air on the body, the skin. Be aware of any noise, both inside and outside. And just have a thought for the day, so it's a sankalpa, it's um, stating your intention for the day, whatever that is, it's a wish for the day, it can be for you or it can be for somebody close to you. And think that thought a couple of times, three times in total. And then let that thought go, your intention has been heard, it's been set now you can let it go and then once more come to be aware of where you are and then come to perhaps bend one knee in and then the other just last time hugging the knees in and rocking from side to side And then take your time to come to a seated position. So that might um, mean putting your feet down on the ground or rolling or just rolling straight over to one side. Take whatever time you need to rest before you come up to a seated position. And sit comfortably. Bring your hands to your heart, and as you breathe in, just open your fingers out slightly, breathing out, chin comes to the chest. Breathing in, fingers out, breathing out, chin to chest. And as we do this one more time, bring your chin to your chest and taking the breath for yourself for the day ahead. So thank you. Very nice to see you all. Hold on the bomb.